just before we start. Also a good idea. <laughs> so hello, a wonderful hello to Amanda. Amanda Hall, wonderful illustrator and author illustrator. It's wonderful to have you on the show. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'm very pleased to be here. I was I was tickled pink that uh, that's very funny when you say that to an illustrator. I was tickled pink. Um, maybe there's a book here somewhere. Um, <laughs> when you agreed to uh, to be on the interview, uh, before um, we start, I should mention that I am Mel Rosenberg, uh, and I am the uh, host of the Children's Literature Channel of the New Books Network. Um, calling you from a very somber Israel. And uh, if there's an air raid siren, then you'll have to excuse me. We will regroup 10 minutes later. Um, Amanda, how wonderful to have you. And um, I learned about your uh, wonderful magical gifts uh, when I interviewed Jennifer Byrne earlier this year on her book and your book, How the Sea Came to Be. Yep. And I said, wow, I have to... if." I have to have this illustrator. This is incredible. <laughs> Thank you. So a, a few uh, a few words about this incredible book, which is going to win major awards. Um, and uh, speak about it a little bit, please. OK, well, um, I've been working uh, for uh, with Erdman's um, books for young readers. I've done several books with them. Um, I love working with them. They're fantastic. Um, they give the illustrator a lot of scope which I, I love. Um, and uh, they offered me this uh, book. Uh, this is literally just before the pandemic um, broke out. And um, I was I was amazed by the text. I thought it was really powerful. I was kind of intimidated by it because it's sort of, uh, well, you know, it's an epic. Uh, this, uh, you know, what Jennifer has written um, is an epic and the style of it was really powerful. And um, so went on holiday and sort of thought, well, can I come up with some ideas? Just try to get my imagination going. Thought, can I take this on? And um, one of the reasons I wanted to take it on was because um, I used to collect fossils as, as a child. And um, I've you know, always been really fascinated by natural history. Um, I actually really enjoy uh, illustrating natural history. Um, but there, there was so much I didn't know um, when I uh, started to look into it. Um, but for me, what was amazing about the book, um, partly what was the amount of research involved, but also it was the pandemic. The pandemic really just kicked off just as I was starting to work on it. I managed to get to go to, because um, uh, I'm living here in Cambridge in the UK, and obviously we've got amazing university here. Um, there's a, a wonderful museum called the Sedgwick uh, Museum of uh, Sciences. I went along to speak to people there, um, which was helpful um, just to just to start my research, really, they put me in touch with um, an, another amazing person um, called Dr. Imran Rachman, who as, at the time was um, at Oxford Natural History Museum. And he uh, he's now at the London Natural History Museum, um, but he became our fact checker uh, for the book um, and Edmunds used him. Um, so I was kind of in his hands. He um, sent me a, a lot of links. Um, he looked over all my um, initial roughs um, and he um, made suggestions about sort of incorrect uh, facts. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of material out there on, on the internet, um, visual material uh, about fossils and, you know, the book isn't only about fossils, but it, so much of it is about sort of deep history um, and it's really important to to sort of understand as an illustrator what on earth you're going to draw and what it looks like looked like Am amanda there you go again what on <laughs> earth what on earth am i going to draw A answer everything yeah 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 starting well, with bi billions of years ago that's um, right okay some of the some of my uh, guests here uh, guests some of my audience are able to see you some right. can hear you. For yes. those who uh, cannot see you, uh, run out and buy this book. It's a classic. <laughs> um, people are still going to be loving it 50 years from now. 
Um, show us a few of your uh, of your favorite pictures, spreads, oh. and illustrations. Yeah, from the book. Okay, I'm going to put my glasses on for this. Um, I I'm quite proud of um, the particularly the the opening ones because they were such a challenge. The opening spreads. So here we have the fiery earth being bombarded um by you know stuff from um outer space asteroids and and comets and so on um then we have the H hadian earth um which is uh sort of how the the earth started out with um you know volcanic um hell on earth um which you know, it was a great challenge to to illustrate. Um, I actually used black watercolor paper, which I've never used before, which is exciting. Um, so, and with that, because I was using gouache, um, which is an opaque uh, medium, it, it really worked so well against the the black, you know, because it's so vivid. Um, and then I worked into it with other other um, materials and so on. Um, and also I did some color enhancement online, you know, on, on in Photoshop rather, um, with the, the help of um, the designer in, at Erdman's who, you know, guided me so it wouldn't get too over the top. Um, then we've got the um, steamy earth when the, the Hadean earth is sort of finished and we've got the Archaean earth, um, which is when everything starts to cool down. Um, and this is where the, the rain starts to form, the first water on Earth. Um, the, the, the heat from the Earth rises up and forms amazing clouds that encircle the Earth, as Jennifer's text says. Uh, and then we have um, the first rains. And these are kind of storms that go on for millions of years. Um, the moon at this point was very much closer to the Earth, which again, I didn't know. Um, so this is the, the first storms, um, my, my depiction, because <laughs> nobody knows what they were like, really, um, but because the, the moon was so much closer, it, uh, it, 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 it's huge. It, it, <laughs> Amanda, I'm not going to say very much today because I'm in awe and uh, you're an <laughs> illustrator. I don't know what to ask, but right. it's, very, it's very interesting that the first part of the book yeah. uh, is about the formation of the earth. Of which we know very little. Yep. And and then you are brought to task to illustrate the Earth, which we're supposed to know about, and then to be yep. uh, precise. Yeah. So like there's there's two halves to this wonderful book. First half, go out and have a blast. Yes. And uh, the second half, oh no no no, we want you to be true to science. Yeah. Well, I think it's more of a gradation uh, into kind of knowledge um, and firm knowledge. Um, so the the next the next parts in the book of the book um, are about very early life, um, the creation of of bacteria and and different and then uh, and so on. Uh, okay, can you show us the the, the first yeah book yeah of course about yeah yeah the first yeah, spread easier, about yeah. about life and the yeah yeah and I uh, this is this is the, the the following spread after the floods where the the earth has sort of cooled down. And we've got a, a sea covering the earth, really, um, an ocean. Um, then this is my depiction for first life. So we've got from very, very, from sort of very tiny little um, cells, then they get more and more complex. Um, and my, I, I, it was really challenging to know what to do with this spread. I really, I'm proud of this one. Um, I did it actually in black line on film, and then I manipulated the color on, on in Photoshop. Um, wow. So, and that worked. You know, I was pleased with the way that worked. Um, again, uh, and it gets it gets more and more complicated. And the feeling I wanted was that it just went on expanding out and out and out. And I think this kind of fan shape um, does sort of get it kind of captures that in a way. And it looks quite lacy and rather beautiful, I think. Um, we've then then got um, these very the, the 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 ones I really love are the um, um, Ediacaran creatures, which are the first complex uh, creatures that 
that people actually know about. Um, and these are just very, very weird and extraordinary um, and went in different phases. Uh, and they are still being contested. They're still being learned about by scientists. So this is like a, a snapshot of what people, scientists know now, um, but you know, it's, it's going to change, you know, so this is as good as we, you know, as, as good as it gets at this moment in terms of accuracy. Nobody knows what color these creatures were. So I had a bit of a field day with the colors. I could do what I wanted. Um, so yeah, and, and then we go on to more sort of, uh, things start firming up in terms of the evidence, scientific evidence. Um, sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll let you say something if you want to, <laughs> rather than me just talk at you. <laughs> uh, so so um, that's very interesting that, that you, you describe it as a kind of a, a gradient of a man to do whatever you want to, no, no, <laughs> do whatever the scientists Up to say. a point, always up to a point, you know, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. So did you have more fun? With the first half of the book oh not really no um i mean it was nice to try out this um this black watercolor paper um i really really enjoyed the um just painting onto it and i used that for i can't remember maybe about four of the spreads there's one later on in the book the deep sea creatures um where you turn the, the book turns upside uh, on its side um, I'll just show you, and that was again using um, the black background. Um, but I, but you can get these really fantastically glowing colours um, because of the, the the contrast with the black, um, which I, I mean, colour for me is sort of, I don't know, one of the main reasons I like to illustrate in a way, and it's it's always fascinating. It's always a challenge. It always excites me uh, finding kind of combinations um, of color so uh, and those creatures I quite like weird creatures and again the deep sea ones are very strange um, unbelievable kind of bioluminescent creatures that, that make light in the dark. So, so explain to me as somebody who doesn't understand so even if, if I were to give you a box yeah and I would say illustrate this box it's still exciting for you because you're going to figure out how to do it. Mm, um, well, I, I, nobody's asked me to do that. I maybe I'd yeah. Well, it would be a challenge. Um, I, yeah, if I could do what I wanted with the box, then yes, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, but I I think uh, you know I don't enjoy drawing everything. Uh, I have to say, um, ah. there are some yeah. What don't uh, you like drawing? Um. Or, you know, or I find things more, some things more challenging than others. I think that um, I, I like, I, it's really hard to, to sort of put it into words. Um, there are certain things that excite me to, to draw and, and some things don't. I mean, figures, you know, people are actually a challenge. Um, animals for me are really easy uh, to, well, I don't know about easy, but they, I respond to um, animal drawing animals. I think I've always I've always kind of enjoyed it. I've always been drawn to that, and yeah, I think children you know children are really really tricky. Um, so always a challenge, you know. And I work at that, um, but some things I think come more more easily than others. Um, I like to be able to be stylized. Um, in my work um and so i'm not the right illustrator to you know if somebody wants somebody to do something realistic i'm not really that person um you know there are people much better at that than than me but i you know having said that i do like to be accurate sort of you know um as i say with uh non-fiction things um that's where the research comes in before we leave uh, for a while, uh, mm. your wonderful new book with uh, Jennifer, um, yeah. two things. I'd like you to read your favorite uh, text mm -hmm. of the, from the book. And then I'm going to ask you a scientific question. Oh, right. OK, well, I'll, I'll read in that case. I'll if you're going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to be careful. I'm going to be careful. And I'm no, going to read no, you don't. It's yeah, yeah, no, you've told me Jennifer, now. So, uh, Jennifer's text. 
Yeah, no, but I'm going to be careful if you're going to ask me a scientific question, because I've got to think, what can I answer? So, um, I, I mean, I, I'm going to choose this, uh, this Ediacaran spread, uh, which says, in Jennifer's words, a little twist here and a little turn there. They combined and they grew and they changed and bigger and wider and longer they got in new forms as they all rearranged. So that's, uh, you know, yeah, fantastic. Um, and so, so such a good prompt for an illustrator. I mean, that's what I felt with with Jennifer's text. Um, you know, it's it's sort of juicy and, you know, visually kind of uh gets you gets your imagination going so yeah so, so. it got my imagination going and actually okay. um i was a scientist for 30 years oh right uh, okay be because of a course i took on how life might have come into existence right about three and a half billion years ago give yeah. or take a few hundred million years right um and of course nobody knows no. um and also in your book um, there's no life, and then on the next page, there's life. Mm. Uh, so, what do you what do you reckon ha happened? I know you're not a scientist, but what do you think happened? Well, I mean, oof, I don't know. I mean, it's interesting that the recent uh, dust that's been gathered from the asteroid um, in space, um, they seem to have found. Um, some basis for life, the components of life in uh, or in that dust so far. I mean, I right. know it's very early days. So that's an old theory um, okay. of, of people such sure. as uh, Francis yes. Crick, um, that life started by a meteor that brought life to yeah. planet Earth. But that doesn't answer the question. <laughs> And it no. started on another planet. Yeah, yeah. You mean, are you asking me a philosophical well, you, question? Yeah, well, you, you don't have to answer the question. It's just something yeah. that uh, we will never know, but it's like yeah. one of the great great questions of the universe yeah, is yeah. Um, that scientists agree that it started out with uh, primitive bacteria, primitive, so-called primitive yeah. Uh, yeah. bacteria. Uh, yeah. Um, but there's a lot of theories on the chemistry Yes. How you can have a cell in this primordial soup. Yes. Um, yes. That would turn into life. Yes. Uh, so when I read this book, I was excited on several levels. Yes. Um, and now, so we're talking about life now. So we're going to segue into Amanda Hall's life. Okay. So tell, tell us about your life, Amanda. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I live in Cambridge now. I was born... Uh, about 10 miles away from here, uh, in a little thatch cottage, uh, about 400 years old. Um, my parents, I'm, my, I'm the youngest of four siblings. Um, my parents, who are both uh, dead now, um, were, 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 were no, a long time ago now, but, um, you know, they, I think they were, they were good people. Um, they were, it was a very creative household, I would say. Um, I feel very lucky to have sort of had that childhood um my my mum um always enjoyed writing I mean she she had a couple of books published um during her her life um and my dad um my dad taught at art school here in Cambridge which he was from Yorkshire they were both from Yorkshire in fact they they came down because he he got a job here um so so, yeah. so one thing i've seen pictures of your house yeah your house your house looks something like out of a bloody fairy tale from the middle ages it does. i know um uh, and i've <laughs> i've seen i've seen houses like this in england they're like yeah they're like right out of you know uh some uh ancient story yeah. um and th what they're called your house is called thumple and dub or something thistle thistle and dub these are the name of the houses. Uh, oh, do, oh, you mean uh, Wattle and Daub? Yeah. Wattle and Daub, that's what you're yeah. Yeah, looking for. Yeah, so yeah. You, yeah, your parents were not born there. No. My father found it, the cottage. Yeah. Um, he was a very um, practical 
uh, guy um, and creative. He found it, it was due to be demolished. Um, people, nobody wanted those houses in 1950 when they moved to um, Linton, this uh, village where I was born. Uh, so he bought it and he actually did a lot of the work himself to restore it and, you know, worked in with local uh, people. And, he, and he, he was he was in, also a musician? No, no, he, he wasn't. My mum was. My mum sang, actually. So, um, but, so, um, so I, I, I could say that your parents bought the house for a song. <laughs> yes, they did. And, they I, have, it, yeah. and neither of them smoked, I hope. No, my no, my mother didn't. My father smoked like a chimney. Um, in, in in that thatched hut. Yeah, yeah, fire risk and everything, but uh, but uh, you know that was usual in those days. Um, I mean, the houses the they they're so small. I mean, my neither of my parents are huge, which is good. Um, you know, because they and they've got beams that descend, and you know, people are not used to them. They can really knock themselves out. <laughs> Kind of walking into the house. So you, you you grew up in a in a in a bloody fairy tale. I did, yeah, yeah, with a lovely garden and you know animals and pets and so on. And on, on the on the edge of a village, um, a zoo arrived um, when I was about ten, just a few doors down, and they had lions and, and all sorts of things, and we could hear them. Uh, anyone at that time could actually start a zoo up. Um, there were no there were no, you didn't have to have a license in those days there in, in the UK. Um, so these people um, put the zoo together and animals kept escaping like Russian bears and things and having to be, um, you know, got rid of because there were wild animals and they're running down the road. Uh, there's a baboon that was on the roof of the, the woman over the road, this elderly woman. Um, and she saw this baboon one morning dancing on top of her coal shed. And so, you know, it was sort of, it was an interesting place to live. <laughs> we also had um, amazing people in our street, I think, who'd been attracted to buying these little cottages. And uh, so it was a colourful sort of environment, you know. Yeah. Baboons dancing on the roof. If, if I yeah. had a baboon dancing on the roof, um, <laughs> I would probably hire him. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so you grew up in this idyllic uh, village. Yeah. Yeah. And your, your dad, uh, your dad drew and you became an artist. How did that happen? Um, well, I, I was surrounded by art and it just was sort of natural to, to do it. Um, my brother um, went to art school. Uh, he was, he's seven years older than me. Um, and I just decided I'm going to go to art school. I think my idea when I was a child was I want to have lots of animals and draw them. That was what I thought my future was going to be. And, um, you know, some bits of that have sort of remained, if you like, you know. So um, and my dad, the other thing my dad did was to um, he did a lot of costume and set designs for the college where he worked. Um, so we had sort of, you know, he'd be building up these little kind of set designs on the kitchen, on the living room table, out of balsa wood and and stuff. Um, I remember him boiling up a load of uh, tights for men in a kind of big vat, sort of, so they'd all be red, you know, and so things like that were happening around me and, you know, because they, they all needed to be for this production. He made amazing hats um, out of things like floor mops and so on, because they were for the stage, you know, and sort of, it was very inventive um, what he was doing, and I and I there's something about putting on a production, and I, I to some degree I think I feel as though um, illustrating a picture book is a bit like putting on a, you know, staging a, a drama, um, and you you know you you set the scene, you set the stage, you you know you find the costumes and all that so there's sort of a, an equivalence and um so I think you know when because I went to art school I did um I did foundation uh, I don't know if that is how it's structured there in the, the U.S. but here you do a sort of thing where you try out all sorts of different um types of art and the thing I felt um comfortable with was just sitting doing pictures painting pictures and I and that is how I kind of am. Um, I like to apply myself. I, I mean, the picture book thing really suits me because I like to have a, 
a specific chunk of time where I'm really concentrating on doing one thing very intensively and then I kind of almost forget about it and move on to a, a totally new thing and I love the variety um, of that I love working with I mean now I work with a lot of authors um, and have quite close relationships with them um, people like Michelle Markel, um, who's a wonderful writer. Um, we did, uh, we've did done a couple of um, art, artist biographies together, one about uh, Henri Rousseau and the other about Leonora Carrington. Um, there's a, another writer called um, Dawn Casey, who's British, um, and we've done two folk tales together, uh, one called Babushka, it's a traditional folk tale from Russia and Italy and so on, um, and then an, an Inuit tale um, called Little Bear which came out um, fairly recently um, published by um, Wisdom Tales so you know I I really value those uh, those relationships so you know and again they're, they're all sort of so everyone's voice is so different as a, an author um, including my own which I think I'm sort of still you know exploring in a way um, so yeah. so um, you you took a fancy to illustration how yeah. did you how did you break in um I went to art school here in Cambridge I did my foundation year um and decided to then apply you then apply for your specialism I applied to do illustration and I in fact did it here at the same college as the foundation no but how did you how did you find an agent how did you find the uh, oh, books oh, sorry, this is, how did you oh did sorry you when I actually finished oh sorry break into the illustration into yeah, yeah. publishing so after what for after three years of my illustration course I then went to London um and started to hawk my um my my portfolio around which is what you did in those days before the internet uh you know making appointments to see um publishers in London which is quite frightening picking up the phone and saying can I come and see you and they, they actually mostly would um, and they'd say, oh, you know, we'll let you know. And you thought, oh, great. And then, you you know, nothing happened. And uh, but I did. I was living in London. I then started working for um, a really lovely guy called um, John Marsh, who um, were, who lived in, in the south of London. And he was a designer and he was doing a lot of stuff for um, Elsa Rowe UP at the time, which was um, English language teaching for the Arab world. Um, and I went down and, and helped with the design side of it. So I was doing paste work, paste up, where you, in those days you had, before computers, you had cow gum and stuff. Um, and he would give me little bits of illustration to do, uh, you know, so I was getting money for um, designing um, and so on. And, you know, just helping this kind of very basic level of design, sticking bits of paper down with type on. Um, but I got the chance to do, you know, to actually start professionally um working I had before that do uh, when I was at college I actually got a chance to um do some uh, uh my first professional job which was some cards um happy family cards so you know I'd done I got things in my folio that were actually published and that's always a massive help um so I you know spent a few years I mean that was 1979 I went down and it took me a few years to really get established it's not easy um but you know I met people along the way I I enjoyed the thing of putting myself out there um and slowly I started to get you know more work picture books and so on and then it sort of I had a few years in in London where I wasn't really doing very much and I started traveling um I sort of exploring different parts of myself really um spent six months in Zimbabwe um uh, in in 1984 and then came back and really buckled down uh came back to Cambridge and got a studio and you know that's when I really started sort of properly building up my career um which is now sort of uh, 50 books later or whatever um you know a lot your, 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 for, your first illustrated picture book for children yeah my first one was actually when I was first in London um and it was something I'd started at college and it was uh, old mother Hubbard and her dog and um I I won't try and get it out now because that will involve me 
breaking things if I do that. Um, but it was that was in black and white. And I, in fact, it was a serendipitous occasion. I I had my I had some pictures um, that I'd drawn, and I went into this um, little amazing antiquarian bookshop in London, and the guy suddenly said, "Oh, hang on a minute," and phoned up this publisher and said, "I'd I'd like you to meet this young woman," and so they. But, but, but Amanda, Amanda, listen. Yeah. yeah. You are amazing, incredibly internationally successful, talented, and so on. Thank you. <laughs> but you know, after interviewing about 120 um, published authors and illustrators, yeah. yeah, isn't it always about this? You know, um, I was in this little uh, pet shop, and I was in this little <laughs> bookstore. Um, you, you have to have the um, you have to have the goods, right? Yeah. When some, yeah. somebody asks asks to see a portfolio, you have yeah, to yeah. a smashy portfolio. But it's like so many people I've interviewed have this story. Yeah. You know, and um and it's it's incredible. Yeah. Uh, there's somebody I want you to meet. Yeah. Um yeah, yeah. You know, do you have if a, I a, may yeah, if I may say, I think it was it, there was it was more chance for serendipity to happen in 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 those times. I think it's so much more controlled now. It's very difficult for um people coming out of college to break in in that way um it's all online it's mm -hmm. you know they just don't get responded to so i think well, we, 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 we need yeah. a new line you know serendipity yeah. isn't what uh yeah we need that we need a, we need to figure out a, a line like that serendipity yeah. isn't what it used yeah. to be yeah 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 that's right yeah yeah. You, yeah so um so that's wonderful and and in the uh interim You've written uh, two of your own books, and you've illustrated well over forty other books. Um, and uh, tell us a bit about the differences between being an author illustrator and an illustrator, because clearly, you've spent most of your career as an illustrator yeah, rather yeah. than an yeah. author illustrator. I'm yeah. intrigued by this. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I uh, I I illustrated this uh, this book. The Stolen Sun, which is the one that's coming out, is going to be retitled um, Song of the Raven. Um, and it's going to be that's the one that's coming out in April um, next year by Wisdom Tales. Um, I, I, I wrote this story. One second, Amanda. Yeah. This one you've written also. This one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is the one. Yeah. This is the one I, I wrote. So so in April, I might have you I might have to have you back on the show. You might do, yeah. I might. That would be good, wouldn't it? That would be good. Yeah, yeah. Serendipitous. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That would be great. Um, yeah, I I wrote the story without any regard for having to illustrate it. Um, you know, it's such a different process. Um, and then I was confronted by my own words and how I was going to realise them. And so that's kind of interesting. Um, and I actually just written another text recently um and been working with um Anna Olswanger the agent um who's a literary agent and 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 a great editor um ah, whom we love hi Anna whom we love and um it was interesting because she has a group of people and we meet on zoom uh, sometimes and I was saying how difficult it is to go from the the writing process into the illustration process and I'm still, I mean, I've had a lot of things I've been doing this year and I'm still trying to kind of, I've completed the text. It's all been approved by Anna and her readers and so on. Um, and I'm now embarking on the illustrations and yeah, it's, it's, it's just a, such a different sort of mindset. Um, and I, I really, for the first time, I really enjoyed the writing. Um, you know, before um, I think it was more of a struggle, but this this time I sort of it was just my imagination was coming up with words, you know, which is sort of in a in a way that um, I hadn't really experienced before. Um, so now I've got to kind of get that those taste buds going with the illustrations, if you like. And my life's been very busy with all sorts of online. I've got an online shop that I'm. I'm working on, um, and that's devoured most of my year, to be honest, um, getting a print shop up and running and so on, which I'm nearly ready with. Um, and I think that, you know, 
that's the thing with creativity you just need to be have that space to be um immersed and i keep trying to kind of immerse myself in the imagery but it's it's hard to you know then you're jerked out of it and then you're doing something utterly different and i need to kind of really have that that time un uninterrupted so i'm just kind of can but if, if you know percolate <laughs> sorry amanda if you know that you're going to illustrate a story that you're writing yeah then doesn't that impact on the text because <laughs> You know, I don't want to go there. I have to illustrate children. And I won't do that. Um, <laughs> this is this is what I've always wondered about because I don't yeah. illustrate. But yeah. when I write, when I when I write, I want to yeah. leave lots of room for the illustrator. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but if if you know if the illust if if it's a if it's a child, then it's a child. Um, yeah. yeah. But if I were an illustrator, I'd say, oh no, no, I don't know how to draw a child. Uh, yeah. I'll make I'll turn it into a dancing baboon. Yeah. Yeah. The I don't know. That's not how it works for me. I mean, I found the subject um, and it's something I really was interested in. And um, and again, done loads of research into this. I mean, I think it's an interesting uh, idea. It's, a, it's actually a biography. Again, it's a nonfiction um, book about a woman who was an amazing um, scientist and you know some i'm really really interested uh, and an environmentalist and you know a sort of absolute pioneer so i'm interested in the subject matter um so my task is now how to illustrate it and what i um with the text when i was writing it i was thinking in terms of spreads i will say that and sort of as a concession to my my future self as the illustrator of this book no but we, <laughs> we have we, we have to do that too as you know right okay yeah yeah sure so yeah. So I, I will be very excited to see these uh, these uh, books in the hatching. Yeah. Um, how many how many projects do you work at simultaneously? Because I read on your website that you can spend a few weeks making one final drawing. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, I mean, really, I just mainly work on one project, um, and I, you know, I'm absolutely steeped in it. That my work's really labor intensive as you, you can probably see um so the, the there's a whole rough process and so on and then refining that getting approval um from the publishers and so on but yeah the actual artwork generally would take me about three weeks probably i mean a, you know the the um jennifer's story um how the sea came to be actually took three years to execute i mean it was during the pandemic so it was sort of slow because everything was sort of slowed down i think um and there was a lot of research um but yeah you know it's it's not a it's 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 hard to be wrenched out of that when i'm in that kind of mm -hmm. you know living it uh living the the that particular book um to do something else you know okay but if you say that you've done I just had this. I'm going to ask you like a, a little bit of a personal question. Yeah. You can answer or you can say baboon dancing on the roof, which means mm. ask, ask me something else. Let's say that you've illustrated 50 books, which is about right. And let's say you got an average of $20,000 per book. Mm. How much is that? But it's not like that because, you know, that's over a massive amount of time. And no, no. It, so, so what I'm saying is, it's like a million dollars, but it's it's like over decades. Yeah. Of hard work. Yeah. And and is it like? Can you be rich being? I mean, you're a famous illustrator. You can turn down work. You're working for Erdman and the best uh, the best publishers in the in the world. Um, and can you can you make a good living doing this if it takes you so long to illustrate <laughs> one book that's a very good question um it's very difficult yeah it's very difficult i mean the, you know the money per book now is is pretty good um but it takes me so long um because of my style 
so that's why I'm doing the other things in, in yeah I was, I was looking work. at it you know other, other illustrators um, you know they do this and they do that and they yeah. uh, you know they mission mission they do everything on the on the pads mm. and you have this process where you wet the the page and you stretch yeah, yeah. it and then yeah. and then then you count to a thousand and then you wait a week <laughs> and then you you do it on the pencil and then you do the drawings with the color pencils and then you take out you rub the yeah you yeah you've followed it yeah uh, uh, you know you know, jews are going to say oy vey <laughs> this is really hard work yeah but that's what a lot of illustrators still work by hand, you know, and uh, I mean, it, it. No, I I, I congratulate you. I think that. You're yeah, amazing. yeah. Thank I, you. Thank I'm, you. I'm, I, I'm, uh, I'm so happy you spent uh, the last 41 minutes talking to me. <laughs> it's incredible. I think I think you're incredible. I'm a big fan. <laughs> Everybody run out <laughs> and buy Jennifer and Amanda's book. So because we have spoken for 41 minutes, it's been a yeah. lot of fun. And um, it's getting towards evening, so we may yeah. have, we, we may be bombed soon. Um, I okay. want to ask you a question, which I ask the uh, illustrators, mm. and that is, um, do you feel hard done by? No, not no. On balance, no. But but you know why I'm asking this question? Not entirely, no. I well, because I'm... the books are, you know, Jennifer Byrne and Amanda Hall. And, um, and sometimes the illustrators, you know, the font is smaller uh, yeah, than the font of yeah. the author. Um, you know, like, I, I had another career, but my first picture book just came out. And I noticed that on the cover, my name yeah. is in Hebrew, mind you, yeah. is bigger than the illustrator, and she made the cover. Right, okay. And, and this book wouldn't be the book without her artwork yeah 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 i mean i think i mean i you know to be honest i get my name is the same size as the um authors mostly uh what i regret is that books aren't catalogued under the illustrator's name that is like really crucial and i wish they were um so you know it gives us a, a sort of invisibility which i think is is a real shame um and yeah that that that's annoying um you know um but you know i don't want to be in a in a battle with with authors you know about 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 that stuff but uh yeah i think there's a there is a kind of a perceived sort of hierarchy in some way um you know which is it shouldn't really be there because you know you it's a, it's a collaboration when it comes to it of of words and an image and they they should support each other and they you know they need you know they they should be equal really um although and you know it, it's, it, the, it's the writer who generates the idea you know you have to say that yeah and the illustrator okay. respond, a responder you know so um i think it's a bit like being a singer and singing somebody's some somebody's uh you know um somebody's song it's a bit like that as well as a singer, you know, and a singer who doesn't sing much now. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, like if you have a singer and a, if you have a songwriter and the person who writes the music, yeah. um, then they both get equal footing, you know. It's Lennon and McCartney or McCartney and Lennon or whatever you want. Uh, it's Rogers and Hammerstein. Um, it's not Rogers and Hammerstein. But if it's somebody um, else's song entirely, uh, and then somebody else sings it, you know, then sort of who gets the billing? It depends on the fame, I suppose, of the, you know, whoever's the most famous. Yeah, like like the most famous song of the of the previous century is not the Masochism Tango. Uh, it's the song called Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Right. And most most people will not be able to tell you who wrote it. No, that's absolutely true. Yeah. Yeah. But um, we're almost at the music. So let's talk a little bit about music. So uh, in addition to your fantastic and wonderful uh, uh, illustrating career and writing, uh, you're also a semi, you call yourself a semi-professional musician. Hmm. What, what, is a, what is a semi-professional musician? I think it's when you're not doing it full time, um, really. Um, you know, it's not my main, it's never been my main career. 
Although mm -hmm. I wonder at some time, you know, points whether it should be. No, but um, you, you you get paid for it, don't you? Yeah, not a lot, mostly. Well, you know. yeah, who pays <laughs> musicians a lot? <laughs> well, true. It's worse. <laughs> it's worse than being an author or an illustrator. Yeah. Okay, um, I was a professional musician then. <laughs> yeah. I I, th I think so. Give yourself some credit here. Okay. Um, and you go to bars. And you have a, a partner who, who plays a wonderful accordion, and you're a marvelous singer. This is all kind of pre uh, 2017. So, Amanda, everything is pre 2017. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. So a few a few words about that uh, stick. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've been in in bands and so on for many years. Um, my partner. Uh, Richard is also a musician and we were in a band together with eight people and so on. Um, so yeah, something I've always loved. Um, and then uh, Dawn and I uh, got together. She plays fantastic accordion, piano accordion. And we I fancied doing a, a cabaret um, duo. So we did that. We were called the Little Black Dress Duo. Um, and we, yeah, we, we, we did uh, gigs around, around town uh, here in Cambridge. And it was it was really great fun, you know. And in in addition to Tom Lehrer, whom I, I love, yeah. um And by Beer Mr. Shane, what other songs do you sing? Oh uh, gosh, uh, we did. Um, uh, let me just see. Uh, as long as he needs me from Oliver, uh, uh, which you know, Nancy's song, which I, I loved doing. Um, I mean, I've also I'm a big. Bob Dylan fan. This is like going back in sort of to you know childhood and so on. So I play guitar. But um, I, I hope I hope you're referring to the early Dylan. Yeah, absolutely. Where, the where, early where, Dylan. Where, where he basically borrowed other people's songs. Well, he he rewrote. I mean, he was very clever, and um, yeah, you know, early folk songs and so on, and he he rewrote those um, to some degree. Um, I, yeah, I, I I grew up on that. Yeah, yeah, me too, me too. Um, and I still, actually, those are the ones that I come back to now. I kind of, you know, pick my guitar up and 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 kind of, they, they still are sort of emotionally very kind of, I'm very connected mm -hmm. to those because they were kind I, of in an early part of my life. I, I asked you uh, whether you wanted to sing for us. <laughs> uh, and um, under other circumstances, uh, I would sing together with you. Uh, -huh. uh we are going through a horrific uh, war and um i you have brilliantly taken my mind off of it um and um it's been wonderful having you before we go though i want to um mention this quote of lewis mm. carroll which i found on your on your mm. website and um he writes, Lewis Carroll, of course, Charles mm. Dodson, from uh, Alice in Wonderland. And mm. what is the use of a book, thought Alice, without pictures or conversation? Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was a fantastic quote to use. You know, it's just, uh, and I've always loved the Alice, um, John Tenniel images. Uh, I think they're fantastic. And, and even, e e even, <laughs> even, even though Lewis Carroll, uh, at some stage did not get along with Daniel, right? Yeah, did he not? I don't know, didn't know that. I, yeah. I, I think they ended up having a row, I can't remember. Okay, um, yeah. But um, I think that this um, connection mm. between authors and illustrators that gives us these marvelous picture books yeah. um, is incredible. And I, I'm just going to tell you one final little story because... Uh, after my career doing other things, I've finally gotten around to doing what I should have done 50 years ago. Um, but when I was a five-year-old, uh, oh, when you were a five-year-old, what books did you love? What are your, um, your favorite? Oh, gosh. Uh, I, we had, I was just thinking about this. We had things like uh, Ladybird books, um, and they had wonderful illustrations in of um, a lot of ones of animals and so on. Uh, there was one called the, uh, the Discontented Pony. They were very moralistic. And they were very kind of depressing in a way, but but the pictures were fantastic, um, you know. And yeah, so that's an example. Um, so um, <laughs> I, I grew up in Canada on Madeline, so oh, okay, Bemelman. So 
Uh, this is imprinted in my mind forever. Um, and I just tell you one little one little thing before yeah. we go. Um, yeah. We we had two stories of Peter Pan. Yeah. Illustrated by different two different uh, illustrators, different mm. different publishers, different illustrators. Yeah. It drove me nuts. <laughs> I was I, I I I couldn't sleep at night. I was this four or five year old, and I was plagued. By this dilemma, I would say to my daddy, Daddy, which of these is the real Peter yeah. Pan? Yeah, yeah. Very difficult. <laughs> so so in, your, in your portrayal of the universe, uh, uh, Amanda, you have created a, a real universe of your own. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. And I'm so grateful that you were on the show. So um, Amanda Hall a illustrator of so many wonderful books and author uh let's meet again uh under better times yeah. in uh in I, I if i wish i had known you i was in cambridge five years ago we could have uh, uh. could have had a little gig but i didn't know you then but now <laughs> i know you and um and it was wonderful uh talking with you yeah and i can't good. wait to see your your new books and uh i'm mel before i forget who i am uh, I'm Mel <laughs> Rosenberg, and I'm the host of the Children's Literature Channel of the New Books Network. And it has been a singular privilege and wonderful, almost an hour, uh, where I've been uh, sitting and talking from afar with the amazing Amanda Hall. Well, thank you so much, Mel. I've really enjoyed it, and it's been fantastic to meet you. And um, I wish you well. Thank, thank you very you. much. We need those wishes. We do. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.